Hello, hello everybody. This is Elissa from Mink Arts and Crafts. Today we are going to do a post review of Pride by Sandra Winther. So this is a diamond art club canvas. It is a 56 by 66 centimeter kit squares and obviously full canvas, full uh, drill field. It has 49 colors and six ABs. Yes, six ABs. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, which is a lot of ABs. Um, so for this particular kit, uh, I started this one. I will actually, I did this one for Diamonds and Diversity 2023 uh, for um, my kit for the event. And I started it on the 29th of May. So I hit it up on the 29th and I think I laid down, uh, let's see, I started in this corner up here because I always start on the side. So I started right here with the almost blacks here. Um, well, I think that one actually may be some blacks. Not quite, I don't remember uh, because it feels like so long ago since I did this. So I started that on the 29th of May, kind of did some of this here, the other parts that called for that color, which is a little bit in the eyebrow, and then a little bit more as we kind of come down on this canvas. It's a rather large one, so obviously I cannot fit it all in the image, but I will throw up a finished picture up so you can see the full panned image. Um, that full picture. So you can see the full view, but here you can see as I slide it up and down. And really on the 29th, that was kind of all I, I kitted up on the 29th and like on the 30th, I laid down that one like color. And I don't think I didn't do anything on it on the 31st and then kind of really started it for real starting on the first, sorry, as I hit my, I try not to hit my desk with my talking hands, uh, but it's hard not to. Uh, and then I didn't really start it, like I said, for real until the first, because I felt guilty starting the event earlier than that. Um, and worked on it, worked on it, worked on it, worked on it some more. Uh, for any of you that have watched my channel before, you know that I tend to work pretty quickly for most of my canvases, but again, most of those canvases are rounds and I like rounds because they go quickly for me. Squares tend to take me a lot longer, but squares in general do take longer. Uh, I finished this kit on the 16th of June uh, and it took me a total of 47 hours and 26 minutes. So I like to be able to, you know, I like to record how much time it actually takes me uh, when I'm actually sitting down and working on a kit. Just because I like to be able to kind of compare. Uh, I'm a little bit of a numbers uh, nerd in that aspect of I like to see how long does it actually take me to do a canvas this size with this number of colors versus something else similar size that maybe rounds and so on and so forth or this size with this number of colors versus something this size with half as many colors but still squares. Uh, I like comparing those numbers because it's interesting to see because then you know, hey, color blocking versus confetti. And this one does have 49 colors, but it did not feel like it had a ton of colors because as you can see, there's big swatches where you've got like you're where you're going and you're not necessarily doing just straight color block color block color block for a lot of sections yes you would for like these large patches in like her face but you could multi-place like sections of two three four and so on and so forth for a big sections of this canvas which made it go very very quickly um so those parts went fairly fast, but the fact that it was squares took quite a while, and the fact that it was such a large square took me a very long time as well. So it took me, obviously, a long time. This is the largest canvas I've done. It's also the significantly largest square I have done. This was, for all of my numbers people, this was my 13th uh, finish ever, and I think it was my uh, only my second finish for the month of June, but uh, when I do my June 
uh, review, then I'll go more in depth of that. But that was my, um, but this is Pride, absolutely gorgeous. I love the rendering on this kit and I love the flame of like her hair and the colors. And I love that you have the greens and these blues that are like practically electrifying for it. And then as you come down into like her neck and the coloring down in there and the way that they did the the rendering right through here for her skin, both in the neck and then also up into her face. I love how her lips turned out where you can see the shadow coming across. Same thing with her eyes. I love like the stare. You feel like she's staring as I like, contour her face, but you feel like she's actually like staring right at you with the gaze in her face. I did make one special drill change out uh, kind of swap on her. So what I wanted to do when I saw this image, the cracks in her uh, skin and in both her face, let me see if I can get it without the, let me kind of bring you down a little bit so you can see a little bit of a closer look on her face. You can kind of see what I did here. Uh, and minus this like glare that you get right there. But you can see what I did, and I did the same thing down in her body. But what I ended up doing is I completely ignored the charting for this crack in her face and then in her uh, neck as well. And I kind of charted how I wanted it to be. And I think I probably will uh, go back and do a little bit of a different color chart right here. I missed this one, so I think I'm going to change that one out. Now I just noticed it now that I'm investigating this canvas and I'm going to change that one to match what I did here because that kind of shows a little bit of what like the charting was supposed to be down here was some reds and oranges this one was going to be reds and oranges with a I don't think there were any ABs down into this crack which I totally changed it uh, and as you can see for the charting for um I know there's there we go I will lift it like that so that way we don't have as much of that glare and you can see her face but it's just the nature of the squares that you get all of this glare on the shimmer um but the charting down into her face basically called for um the ABs I'll pull out the ABs so you can see what we had here we had six ABs We had a purple, a blue, a darker purple, and these were all kind of in her hair. And then as we come over into um, these ones, we had a yellow, an orange, and a white. And these three ABs were in her hair and scattered throughout, but they were also in her face for the crack. And what I ended up doing, it kind of started with uh, four, which was this one. And it kind of went from the four with a little bit of the five. And I don't think the six was in her face at all. Um, it may have been in a couple spots. It was more in the eye. Uh, I didn't use this one in her face, uh, cause that one's more down into patches of hair kind of in the bottom right area. So I didn't really use this one in her face. Uh, that's more in the eye and a couple other spots. But these two were in the crack of her face. And I saw this image and I saw the crack and it automatically made me think of Kintsugi, which is the Jap which is a Japanese art form used for ceramics. And essentially whereas uh in the America when you break a plate, you break your china, you break a ceramic plate, ceramic bowl, whatever it is, or a vase, what do we typically do? We throw it away. Well, in Japan, when you break any kind of uh, ceramics or anything like that, they don't throw it away. They take it, and it's a very, very involved process. I've actually got one of my um, uh, plates, one of my plates from that I actually got when I, uh, all of my plates that I use for my uh, dishes that I use on a daily basis, I got in Japan. They were made in Japan. I got them in Japan when I lived there. One of them is actually broken completely in half, like a big crack, completely two pieces. It's sitting in a cabinet waiting for me to actually take the time to go through. And I have the whole, I have all the materials I need to go through and do this exact process uh, for Kintsugi. 
but essentially it's where you use gold um, to go through and do this process right here and you bond the two pieces back together using gold. And essentially the whole premise is you take what is broken and you bond it back together and it creates this beautiful work of art where uh, you still see the crack that was there but it shows the beauty in what was once broken and is now kind of put back together. Um, so you see the cracks, but using the gold makes them even more beautiful than what they once were. So whereas in America, we would typically throw it out. The Japanese are like, no, that's not broken. We need to go through this lengthy process. And it's a very involved lengthy process, which is why I have not done it yet. But I have all of the materials and I have my plate and everything. So I saw this and I saw these cracks and I'm like, I need to actually do that. Because you can see the difference. Like this is the original artwork. You can see how it's very bright and then it kind of fades out to more of the yellow um, for those cracks. And I saw this and I'm like, that needs to be Kintsugi, which is gold. So I ended up getting metallic gold um, drills from DP with sparklers. And then I looked at it, I tried some different things, used the tweezers, took them on and off, on and off, on and off. And I have to say the tweezers that worked the best for this were actually the ones that I got from, let me pull them over. These ones right here that I got from Sparkle Queen Creations. These tweezers right here worked so much better with their flat surface to be able to pull the drills off than the, as I knock everything over, Diamond Art Club tweezers. These were like crap when it came to being able to pull the drills off. I could not pull a single drill off with these tweezers, but these were like my lifesaver. Worked amazing to do all the things. So that is the one change. This is actually the first canvas that I have actually done any kind of like blinging it up or any drill swaps or anything like that. And I was super excited to do that. Uh, and I just kind of ignored the charting and was like, this is what looks good. This is what I like. I kind of went from the gold to, so the metallic gold to the orange. And then from the orange, I went to the yellow AB and kind of worked my way out with those from the one to the other and kind of worked my way out with those. Um, and that's what I did for all of these cracks. And I think I am gonna go back for uh, this one crack that you see that I just completely missed. This one right here. Uh, that one needs a little bit. I don't know that it necessarily needs gold. I don't know. I'll decide whether I want to go through the effort of doing that one or not or leave it as is. But that was the one change that I made on this. Oh my goodness. You can see how reflective it all is. But I feel like that really made a difference for the look of her face and gave it that gold that I was picturing and imagining. So that was the one change that I made on her. Let me bring you back up so you can kind of see our baseline. But the canvas was great. I had no issues with um, having like minus, you know, the, the pain in the butt issue with all of the square drills where I lay them down and then I usually have to kind of use my thumb to pop some of them in to get them fit because they fit so snugly with some of these like uh, newer ones. I don't see, like as you look, there's no crazy gapping anywhere and I'm not the best placer when it comes to squares because uh, I'm so new to it. But even as we come down here, like there's not even down in here, there's not even any crazy, crazy big gaps in these light colors, sorry about that, that you see there. And I'm not the best, like I said, I'm not the best placer. There's a little, tiny bit of gapping, but really not much. Um, it couldn't really be any tighter than this, but there were no popping drills, nothing like that. Worked fantastic. Um, let me bring you back up. And then we will go to our, come over here and go to our drills. So as we look at the drills, Obviously, as you can see, tons and tons of drills left over. Absolutely no worries or concerns about running out of anything. There was all the colors possible. Uh, 
like copious amounts still of a lot of these colors. I mean, lots of drills still in a lot of the colors. Some of them I felt like, yeah, there's a lot left over in all of these drills. Lots of ABs left over that I could still use for blinging up other stuff. Um, so plenties, plenty of drills left over with these. No complaints. Like I said, I don't really keep my trash and I didn't feel like this one had much trash at all in this kit there. Uh, so that's that one as we do our pry canvas. Um, as I commented here, I love the look of squares, not the time it takes me to do them. So I'm like, okay, now I really need to do uh, a bunch of round kits. I did have to take breaks with some um, paint gem mini kits in between just because I needed a mental break. Even though those are square kits, they're just like so small and work up so quickly that it's a breather from something this big. Because for me, it's like, I feel like I have a very short attention span. So if something's taking me a long time, and I know a lot of people will be like, well, it only took you like two and a half weeks. That's not very long, which for many people, that is a very, very fast workup. But for me, it felt like it took absolutely forever. And everybody diamond paints at a completely different pace and that's completely fine. But for me, that was a long time. And I was going like, oh my goodness, am I ever gonna finish this canvas? It's absolutely beautiful, loved it to pieces but I was ready to move on and work on something else just because my attention span is so short, which is why you will probably not see me doing any of like the Chuck Pinson landscapes, even though I think they are absolutely gorgeous and I would love to do some of his seascapes. They're so big and they're in squares and I wanna do them, but they're so big and they're in squares. So um, I'm not gonna go over all of the tools that I used just because I swapped my stuff out like halfway through because I realized I'd been using the same tools for like half of, uh, for like three weeks and I needed to change it up. But I ended up finishing the kit with this beautiful tray from Lexi. Amazing, love it, favorite. Uh, this is, I'm, I think one of my, like my all time favorite pen shop has gotta be Jim's Handmade Pens because that's like, I love the simplicity of his uh, three bump pen and they're like an amazing pen po like price point for anybody that's looking for a great starting point for uh, a nice uh, like handmade pen. Uh, this is a great starting point. And then I, that one needs to go in a different tray. That's my cutter from my washi tape. This one that I had my 10 placer on is from Shimmering Canvases. And then this one right here is from Stacy Travis. It's like, look at how beautiful that is. It's so light, I love, 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 love. This is like one of my new favorites. Love every aspect of it, it's incredible. Um, it's from Lady Lace Customs by Design, Stacy Travis. Uh, you can go to hers, you find on uh, Facebook from her page. They have a website, but also you can get some of their drops on Etsy and gyms are on Etsy. So those were the ones that I ended the project with, but those are what I was working on at the end of the project. And I will put links for these down below. But this was my post review, latest finish. Amazing kit, gorgeous, love her. Anyways, do all those YouTube type things, the like, the subscribe if you have not already subscribed, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day, everybody.